What is up, my fellow Cobras and Miyagi Dozer alike? Uh, we've got ourselves something kind of special here. We have a season three clip uh, of Cobra Kai, and it's looking for answers. It's Daniel visiting Okinawa, and he is uh, clearly talking to Kumiko in this clip. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to watch the clip. You're going to be able to hear my thoughts as the clip's playing. And then once I finish with the clip, I'm then going to talk about it, and then I'm going to see what it might mean. Um, what kind of, uh, you know, Easter eggs or, you know, nuggets of information that it can provide us um, going into season three and what we can expect. And already off the bat, the haircut looks uh, on Daniel looks very season two-ish. So I have a strong feeling that this Okinawa stuff will be right at the beginning of season three. I think it'll be right at the start, but, you know, we'll have to watch the clip to find out. So I'm going to check it out now and I'm going to let you guys know. So I'm watching it now. Interesting so far. I love the bond between Daniel and Kumiko. It, it was such a great thing in that movie. I felt out of control. Exactly. Used to go to Mr. Miyagi for help. Ah. Uh, but you man, know, I am the same age now that Mr. Miyagi was. Oh man, that's that's crazy. He looks good though. Oh. Oh. Oh, hello. Okay, this is interesting. No, hang on. Uh, hang on a minute. So first of all, I just want to get into the the part which which really. <sighs> I feel is a uh, sort of underappreciated part of this show. While we're all focused on Miguel, Robbie, Johnny, Sam, and Tori, um, let us not forget that the Karate Kid trilogy was centered around Daniel and Miyagi and the bond that these two shared. And I feel this clip only just it, it only just adds to it and reinforces it. And just hearing Daniel talk about Miyagi, the the softness in his voice in that moment tells you. The, how much he's missing him and the fact that he says he's now the same age Miyagi was when Miyagi met him Not only does it, you know, I'm just gonna say Ralph Macchio. You're looking good on it uh, You know it looks wise you're looking good um, Same as Zabka you both look great uh, for your respective ages But it, it does sort of bring true to what I've said before about this show is it makes you realize that time waits for no man and time is just you know, you know, man or woman, time, time just goes for everybody. And it feels like Daniel's arc up to this point is he's using what Miyagi's taught him to try and lead the best way he can. But the problem is that Daniel faces, and I feel like a lot of the struggle with this, I mean, me personally, I can relate to this quite a lot because I've always found that mentors to have a big impact on me. Um, there was a teacher in the college that I went to. I learned so much from this guy and I haven't seen him in years But just the teachings that I learned from him were some of the best things I have ever learned or will ever learn and You know, sometimes I wish I could just call him up and you know say hey uh, Where are you? You know, hey, I need a bit of advice on this and I think we can all kind of relate to that We've all had someone in our lives who's ma helped make our lives better by being there as a mentor. And Daniel has always sort of struggled with that aspect and Miyagi helped him balance it. So I think season three, it isn't gonna probably be as action packed as season two in that sense, but I feel like season three is gonna be a lot of, it's the redemption piece. It's gonna be how the characters move on. And I feel like this is, this is setting up something for Daniel where he finds his inner balance that he's been losing since Miyagi has been gone. And it's one of the most emotional parts of the show. Anytime Miyagi's name's mentioned, anytime the soundtrack from the movies, you know, the soft little, uh, I think it's the flute, I'm not too sure, the soft um, instrument starts playing uh, as the camera pans across the cars and the car that Miyagi gave him. You know, it's just, you just get hit in the heart and in the feels straight away. And this, I really am excited to see what season three is going to bring to Daniel's arc. And I'm excited to see how Chosen and Kumiko play into that. Because I really feel like there's a lot of good story that they could do there. Especially for the character of Chosen um, and the character of Kumiko. To further Daniel's story arc along. 
and this is why I think him reaching out to Johnny saying, look, we need to work together here, is because of this trip. It's because of this trip to Okinawa. And in season one, you know, Amanda even says, you know, I want the LaRusso I married to come back to me, you know, take a trip, take a road hike. I think Daniel will take this trip early on in season three because he's trying to find answers. So he won't do it straight away because, you know, your daughter's just almost been, you know, beaten up and Robbie's in trouble and whatever. So it will be early into season three. I'd say probably maybe the first couple of episodes and you're going to just see me, uh, Daniel going there, just looking for answers, trying to find peace. And I think Kumiko and Chosen are going to both help him along that path. And the, the thing I love about this clip is it's short and sweet, but it has so much story detail. I love this show. I swear, I absolutely love it. The writers on this show are absolutely incredible. There are so many shows or movies I watch with this kind of length of a scene, right? This is just a, a small clip from a scene, mind you. But I look at scenes, right? And in this 50 seconds, there was more emotional punch than some of those in like double the scene length. You know what I'm saying? They do so much with so little and it's so brilliant with just character development and story. And no matter what side of the fence you're on, whether you're Cobra Kai or Miyagi-Do, you're Miguel or Robbie, you're Johnny or, you know, you're uh, Daniel, you know, or you're Kreese or Miyagi, you know, or you're Silver or whoever, or you're Tori or Sam or you're Hawk or Dimitri. The show does a great job at keeping that grey area sort of there. It keeps that grey area there where you look at it and then you look at it through the lens of the characters and then you start to see that not everyone's a bad guy. They've just been taught the wrong way, which is one of the themes of the show. And it brings into question that whole nature versus nurture thing, how it re it is really important that naturally, yes, naturally you can kill, but the nurturing that you have will send you down that path. So nature, in a sense, can def define you and also nurture. And what, what choices and actions you take will then define who you are and where you go and what you be and how you live uh, for others and that kind of stuff. So I'm just excited to see how this really adds into Daniel's arc. I'm excited to go back to Okinawa. And Cobra Kai is building on the legacy of the original trilogy um, and of course, you know, you can count the next Karate Kid in there as well. It's really building on those four movies with such great detail that when you watch the show and then you go back and you watch these movies, you watch them with a different kind of perspective that you didn't have before. And, you know, we all love Daniel and Miyagi's relationship in the movies. I mean, you remember that scene in Karate Kid 3 when Daniel just flips out at Miyagi and Miyagi's tearing up and, you know, just slams the door in his face. I struggle to watch that that part because it's just, you know, Miyagi's only trying to help and he's, you know, just gets a load of, uh, of that slung in his face. So it wouldn't surprise me if when looking back, Daniel does remember those times where, as he says to Sam, you know, when he joined uh, Cobra Kai, you know, I used to be in Cobra Kai and it turned me into this, that and whatever. And he says, it's not something I'm proud of. It's because of that. It's not just because of him punching up some guy in the nightclub. It's because of how he started treating those closest to him, like Miyagi, the, the people around him as friends. And this whole sort of Okinawa trip is about refinding it in a sense. And what, what will help him heal and those around him heal. Because right now, they need it. You know, Miguel, Robbie and Johnny, especially those three, they really need it. They really need it. Dimitri, Tori, Hawk and Sam, they've gone through some stuff. But they're, they're, they're in a different kind of position. They'll be fine after time, if you know what I mean. Well, not fine, but, you know, they've got a, a bit of an easier task than Johnny, Miguel, and Robbie have, in just my opinion. You know, I mean, I know Hawk's ego's been damaged, and I know Dimitri's got confidence, and I know Tori probably wants a rematch. But Miguel is facing a life threat, you know, a, 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 an injury that could put him away for life. Um, and, and unless he finds a way to crawl out the bed um, and, you know, recover out of paralysis, which eventually he will, probably by the end of the season. And then you've got Robbie inside, who's probably fighting for his life, dealing with God knows what. And yeah, so you've got Miguel and Robbie going through all that. And then, you know, Johnny going through the trauma of seeing his own son sent inside and the kid who was like a son that he was training be absolutely demolished. So it's it's... 
it's tough. It's tough for these characters, and they need something right now. They need that Miyagi kind of presence to bring them together, and what better person to do it than Daniel? Daniel is the person who holds all the cards in this situation right now, and I think it's it's kind of overlooked how good of a role he's going to have this season. So I'm excited to see where this goes. I love this clip. I'm probably going to rewatch it a few more times. But guys and girls, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this um, little clip here. I really enjoyed it, and if this is the stuff that we're getting in season three, it bodes well, and I'm re I'm just really really excited. So again, comment down below. Let me know. It'd be good to get a discussion going down there. And I want to thank you guys for the uh, comments and the good feedback. How you you know you like how I analyze certain scenes, how I analyze character choices. Um, I really appreciate that. Also, um, I will be doing live streams on Sunday now as well. So when I've decided the time, I will let you guys know in a channel update. And then in the live stream, you guys can ask me direct questions. I can directly respond to you. You know, you can get to know me a little bit better. I can get to know you guys a little bit better. And that way it's a bit more personal, uh, personable for all of us. And, you know, you can ask me anything. It could be Cobra Kai, Star Wars, Marvel, you name it. I'm a big pop culture nerd. Um... But yeah, guys and girls, comment down below. Let me know. Thank you all so much for the support lately. Really appreciate it. And I will see you all in another video soon. And yeah, I, w I normally end the videos with, you know, defeat does not exist in this dojo. But with the context of this video, I'm going to end it with something else this time. Balance is not just for karate. Balance is for whole life. Your whole life. I probably butchered the quote word for word. But you guys know the one I mean. That Miyagi quote. Miyagi wisdom. Oh man. It's a shame he wasn't around for this show. But it really does add to the emotional weight of it. See you guys in another video soon. And yeah. Oh man. Looking forward to season 3. Not long to go now.